celebrating our 20th anniversary. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. College football Saturday under the lights and on top of the poles. Some 300 miles apart, the nation's number one and number three teams run parallel courses tonight. Could these be the two on a collision course for New Orleans? On ESPN, top ranked Florida State is in Charlottesville. The hype over for father and son that's behind them. So is Bobby's 300th win. We see history tonight win number 300. Peter Wark still very much center stage this time for the right reasons. Now that he's shaken off the rust, can he return the Knowles to their dominant ways? Meanwhile on ESPN2, third-ranked Virginia Tech facing Pittsburgh. The Hokies fresh off their 62-point pummeling of Syracuse. Dominated in every phase of the game. Freshman Michael Vick, the newest star in the Big East. Is he big enough to take Tech where they've never gone before? One slip for either tonight, and it's a dream derail. Keep your clicker handy. It's primetime college football at ESPN at ESPN2. Everybody. Welcome aboard. Of course, Bobby Bowden, coaching legend, got his 300th win last week. His Seminoles have been number one all year. Frank Beamer building the powerhouse in Blacksburg. We'll see both on ESPN and ESPN2 this evening. Brian Kenny and Rodney Gilmore here. We're excited about this. First, we're looking at number one and number three. Let's check in on number two. Pretty long afternoon for the Nittany Lions. Penn State taking on Illinois. And Illinois, of course, off the upset win over Michigan just a week ago. We didn't think it'd be this tough. Boy, 7-7 at the half. And a rough go until it for Shard Casey. Brilliant move, breaks out. Uh, maybe it was a matter of time, Rod. Maybe it was in this tough game. Well, he came in and opened things up for them. Casey really stepping in for Kevin Thompson, who struggled throughout this game. It was a field position game in the third quarter, Brian. The win, a big factor. Penn State finally punching the ball in a couple times to take control of the game. 27 to 7, the final. Penn State is up to 9 0. Well, let's check in right now. Florida State and Virginia meantime. Virginia 4-3, and three, historically playing the Seminoles very tough year after year. Bobby Bowden looking to go 8-for-8 eight eight in the ACC, eight titles in eight years. Let's get the latest now from the men who will call the game, Ron Franklin and Mike Godfrey. Gentlemen. Brian, thanks very much. It is very noisy at this stadium. A packed house, a gorgeous evening in this part of the state of Virginia. And it seems as though the Seminoles get everybody's best shot, particularly when you're number one in the nation. Mike, on Tuesday, we talked with Bobby Bowden, and he said, I address my club about the BCS standings and the fact that we control our own destiny. How secure are they at number one, and what do they have to do to maintain? Ron, I don't think Florida State has played like the number one team. They have the talent, they have the coaching, they have everything. And I'm not sure they can beat Florida. I think what they need to do is a momentum game. They need to break out here against Virginia, play very well, play well against Maryland, the open date, and then get ready for Florida. So breakout is the word if you're a Florida State fan tonight. Brian, back to you. We'll be back with the game shortly. All right, Ron, thank you very much. That, of course, on ESPN. Meantime, over on ESPN2, Virginia Tech and Pittsburgh. Good barometer of strength in this one. Pittsburgh, 4-3, and three, but we're tied up with Penn State with less than two minutes left in the game. So this, we'll see how good Virginia Tech is playing again in Pittsburgh, just like Penn State. Let's go right now to the men who call this ball game on ESPN2. It's Steve Levy and Todd Christensen. Steve? All right, Brian, thanks very much. Frank Bremer looked us square in the eyes of Virginia Tech coach yesterday said, hey, we don't talk about the polls, we don't talk about the rankings, we don't talk about the strength of schedule or lack of. On the schedule tonight is Pittsburgh, and they look to treat the Panthers like they've treated everybody else all season. Steve, I'm not sure that they're not paying at least a little bit of attention to the BCS schedule, but one ranking that they are paying attention to is what their defense and offense are doing. The bottom two statistics you see may have come to fruition you may have been cognizant of, but not the top one 43.3 scoring per game the result of that is Michael Vick he is the tremendous redshirt quarterback who is having a tremendous season that 200 passing efficiency rating is unbelievable see if he is averaging 14 yards per attempt which is absolutely astounding simply amazing and so they've got arguably the best offense the best defense and no question about their special teams Virginia Tech has it all but right now they have the number three ranking Brian back to you 
All right, Steve, thank you very much. And this is your chance to vote in while you're watching both of these games. And if you saw Penn State earlier on, uh, let us know on ESPN.com what you think. Which team, which of the top-ranked bowl championship series teams has impressed you the most this season? The Florida, Florida State, Penn State, and Virginia Tech. Any of the top teams, vote in, and we'll let you know how the voting is going throughout the evening at the half and later on. Well, again, on ESPN, Florida State and Virginia. Peter Warwick is there and got Michael Vick and Virginia Tech taking on Pittsburgh over on ESPN2. Enjoy the first half on both games. Mom, Dad, a 37-year-old that lives at home should pay rent. It's great, oh, Mark. But I want airline miles mm -hmm. or points. I don't understand. My rent would earn me airline miles, mm -hmm. and with points I could upgrade to, like, Grandma's room. Right. <laughs> like a rewards program. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, what does this look like, a Holiday Inn? <laughs> More ways to collect and redeem points than any other hotel program. That's today's Holiday Inn. The great thing about 1-800-CALL-ATT is the rates don't bounce up and down. For the same low rate every minute everywhere, dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. Smooth. Are you ready for this? Hit me with your best shot. Kick old man winter in the team with Prestone Antifreeze, the number one way to fight corrosion and protect your aluminum radiator to 84 below. Fire Get in the away. Prestone zone. 75 degrees at 75-year-old Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Just about set for the number three team in all the land, Virginia Tech against Pittsburgh. We check in down on the field. Here's Holly Rowe. Thanks, Steve. Well, Pittsburgh has had a quarterback controversy this year. David Priestley started the season but quickly lost his job in game one's second half. He's been the backup the rest of the way until last week he got a start against Rutgers. This was a breakout performance throwing for 375 yards. Walt Harris says he is executing his system, and he is the quarterback who has the best work ethic right now. Although in his third game, it's going to be hard to start against the speed and chaos that is the Virginia Tech defense. All right, Holly, thanks very much. This is a rivalry, these two teams getting together upon joining the Big East Conference, the first meeting back in 1993. And there's a look at head coach Frank Beamer. The all-time series, this is the seventh meeting but Pittsburgh didn't win the last meeting here at Pitt Stadium. And they, they feel really good about the possibility of an upset. But let's give some credit where credit is due. Frank Beamer has done just an amazing, an amazing job with this program over the last 12 years. Now they are on the cusp of a potential national title game in the Sugar Bowl, Steve. And the head coach of Pittsburgh is Walt Harris, his third season of the Reigns. If intensity counts for anything, the Walt Harris is going to turn this program around. He is a detail man through and through. He's got him working well up here in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh won the toss and will defer. Virginia Tech to receive. Nick Lotz kicks it off. And it is picked up at the five-yard line by Andre Kendrick, the running back back on special teams. And Virginia Tech will start there on offense. Chiron Stiff, he is the Big East's leading rusher. As far as the wideouts are concerned, Andre Davis he is the burner the track star showing he's got the hands to match his speed and up front Steve Damasi will replace the injured starter at center Keith Short Short was the only senior on that offensive line first down and 10 ball at the 16 yard line stiff and Ferguson are the running backs behind Michael Vick and they start out of the shotgun Pittsburgh talked about nine in the box you see it right there and no gain on the play they stop stiff. The Pittsburgh defense, they're led up front by Damon Gibson. The coaches have selected him as their defensive player of the game the last two contests. And the backers, Scott McCurley, starts in the middle. He is a redshirt freshman walk-on. I hope to see some Ryan Gonzalez there as well. The secondary, Hank Poteet, a key DB and also a key on special teams. They lost two, so it's second and 12. They line up out of the eye behind Michael Vick. Two receivers split out to the left. And Vick off play action. The lefty passer under pressure. And he'll take off. He's across the 20, but not much more there. Maybe out to the 21-yard line. And Scott McCurley got him. Scott McCurley is going to be key in this particular game for this reason. 
as a walk-on inside backer. He is only 215 pounds. He's going to have to hold up against an offense that rushes for 242 yards per game. And at 215 pounds, Steve, that's asking an awful lot. Michael Vick displayed his wares there, Steve, but have a lot of people thinking that this is a left-handed Donovan McNabb. He gained eight on the play, brings up a third down and four. Virginia Tech, third down conversions, you saw the numbers. Nobody has been better in the conference. Audible at the line of scrimmage, Vic to throw. Under heavy pressure, fumble. Ball is loose, who's got it? And it looks like Tech has recovered. So many times, Steve, Anthony Thibodeau is the one who's going to come up with the ball, but here's the deal. The ice, the pass protection breaks down, and for whatever reason, it's right in his face. Kareem Thompson is the one that comes completely untouched, sacks the ball, and it's heads up on the part of Thibodeau to come up with that ball for Virginia Tech. Good decision, Steve, by Pittsburgh to defer and come out with their defense first. Jimmy Kimball, the leading punter in the Big East, will boot it away. And a pretty good kick it is. Fair catch is called for by Hank Poteet. And they will start after the 33-yard punt with fine field position. The Pittsburgh offense, Nick Goings, will start at tailback. He can run and catch out of the backfield. They hope to see Kevin Barlow getting some carries as well. He's got an ankle problem. The wideouts, the most productive tandem in the Big East, probably. Grimm and the true freshman, Antonio Bryant. We'll watch for them. And up front, Ethan Weidel is the best of the bunch. They started three redshirt freshmen a week ago in their big win over Rutgers. Put up some 500 yards of offense. David Priestley, the quarterback, Nick Goins, and Chris Fiola behind him in the Pittsburgh backfield. And they will give it to Goins on the first play, and he's right up about midfield. It's a Virginia Tech defense that is led by, arguably, again, the best tandem of defensive ends in the country. Corey Moore gets all the attention. John Engelberger deserves more than he gets. The linebackers, Jamel Smith, nominated for the Buckus Award, is the best linebacker in the nation, and it's an outstanding secondary. Anthony Midget is the best cover there, and against talented Pittsburgh wide receivers, we'll look for pressure on Midget and Ike Charlton, the other corner. Gain a four on the play, brings up a second and six. They're going up the middle, wide open. Priestley had a man and could not connect. Was looking for Nick Goings, the back out of the backfield. Goings is on the circle route to the middle as, this, as they separate, going man for man. Here's the pressure, though. Watch what happens as Priestley has to step from, from the side. Here's Corey Moore right there. He forces him to step up. He throws off the back foot. He's got a man for man exactly what he wants because Hawks can't stay with him, but he just throws it a little bit too far. The result of pressure by Corey Moore, number 56. Brings up a third down and six. Tech went three and out. We'll see what Pittsburgh does. And there's motion from the far side, and now motion from the near side. Let's see if Pittsburgh drew him off. Well, clearly Moore was way offside, but he was able to get back, and that's what he's trying to say to the line judge right there. It's all good. I got back. Well, Steve, you know what they're doing here? They're calling it fourth down. They're calling it a no play. This is interesting. You don't see this very often. Wow. Evidently, what happened is that the center snapped the ball, and he went down and said, that's it, play's dead. And so the result is, is that he wasn't offside. He was able to get back. Corey Moore able to talk the official into it. There's a block kick. They blocked it, Steve. Only the second time this year they've been able to block a punt. Virginia Tech, we touched on the special teams in the open, and there's an example there. Right up the middle, Steve. This is the team that in the 90s has blocked more kicks than any other team in the nation. This is what they're known for, but up to this point, they'd only blocked one kick. Watch right up the middle. You're going to see there's Corey Moore taking the man out right up the middle, taking it all right off the foot is their wide receiver, Andre Davis. Star player. Where else do you see this, Steve? But of a Virginia Tech, your star wide receiver, your main go-to guy is blocking kicks, for goodness sakes. What they said was true. They love to have the starters on special teams. He showed some of his speed right there, bursting up the middle, almost untouched. And we'll see what Virginia Tech can do in the first break of the football game. They start at the 46-yard line. The handoff up the middle, and a gain of inches for Chiron Stead. 
We talked about the fact that Frank Beamer is a head coach who's directly involved in special teams. Yesterday, Steve, we saw him out on the field practicing things like block kicks, running with blocked field goals. As we pointed out, that's the first block kick of the year, but the reason for that is the yards per return right here. They've been having outstanding, nearly 17 yards per return, so they didn't feel compelled to do that. But obviously, Beamer saw something in the films that indicated they could go up the middle and do it, and that's exactly what they did. In the 90s, Virginia Tech has blocked more kicks than any other Division I-A team. A big part of their game, special team. Vic on the option, keeps it, He's gone. it. The 30, the 20, they'll never catch him. Michael Vick, touchdown, 46 yards, and Virginia Tech capitalizes off a blocked punt. Steve, there are people that are quick, and there are people that are, are fast, and there are people that can stop on a dime. Michael Vick did his impersonation of Barry Sanders, stopping on a dime. Watch the flow of people that go completely the other direction. Watch all the blue shirts. They're going to go to the top of the screen. Now watch right here as he stops right there. Now he cuts back, and nobody's there, because everybody is over-pursued. This is the element that number seven brings to Virginia Tech, as well as being a quality drop back passer. Steve Michael Vick is not just an athlete. He's a terrific quarterback. Extra point upcoming from Shane Graham. And Graham connects. The extra point is good. Michael Vick breaks one. It's good for a 7-0 Hokie lead. Sunday NFL Countdown at 11 a.m. on ESPN. This is a real mom and pop hardware store. I think we have a nice family feel. A couple of months ago, we got a little bump in our car. Well, we've been with our State Farm agent for 26 years because I think he puts his personal self into it. Just like we do at the hardware store, he actually listens to what your needs are. It makes me feel pretty important. Get to know your State Farm agent. You can't put a price on a good relationship. When the classroom isn't fit to sit in, the school runs out of books, and the teachers run out of answers, all that's left for sick students... I'm sick and tired of never being listened to! ...is to put their lives on the line. Unless he took over the school. It's payback's time. ...to show the world the light. It's gonna blast us. This all began because of the conditions of our school. They're coming in. This is the end for you. It's just the beginning. Light it up. Rated R. November 10th, only in theaters. It's five years, and we finally get City Boy away from the yeah, stock I'm market. I'm getting firewood. <laughs> You've been doing that all day. Hey, did you hear about my stocks? Man, can I pick the winners? <laughs> yeah, down 20 points. But if stocks were like football, I'd put all my money on New York. What? <laughs> New York? Oh, man, I bet you 50 bucks they win tonight. No way. It's not going to happen. Now you can stay connected happen. with internet-ready wireless phones, one of the many new technologies available at Best Buy. <laughs> I'd take that bet. <laughs> <laughs> They're hey, not gonna make win. it 100. You got it. 100 bucks. Did you hear that? ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Best Buy. When you're looking for a better way to buy electronics, appliances, computers, and music, stop into Best Buy. A good look at the Cathedral of Learning on campus here at the University of Pittsburgh. Houses many classes and offices of the faculty, and Pitt's going to learn to play from behind. Now seven to nothing. Cathedral of Learning. You are such an academician. I am so impressed. You know, it's amazing what you pick up reading a media guide. <laughs> Jimmy Kibble will kick it off. Hank Pauto. Pauto is the lone man deep. Poteet in the end zone. He will take a knee, and Pittsburgh will start. First and ten from their own 20. When you're going against an option quarterback, is it imperative that your secondary does not overpursue? Take a look at Demetrius Rich and then Ramon Walker. He is going to overpursue. He's going to be out of the play. Vic is going to stop on a dime and going to be gone. Now as he cuts up the field, they want him to pitch, but instead now he cuts back. Nobody's there. You see Rich is gone. Vic comes back against the float. He doesn't even need a blocker because everybody has taken themselves out of the play and he's able to take it to the house. We talked with the defensive coordinator from Pittsburgh yesterday, and they said on the option, they want to make Vic pitch the ball. And there's an example of why. They don't want him breaking away for 46 yards and a touchdown. Priestley to throw right into the middle. It is caught up high for a short game. Priestley to the running back, Nick Goings. And there is Larry Coyer in his third year. has made a big improvement in the rush defense at Pittsburgh. The season prior to Coyer being here, they were ranked 101st in the nation rush defense. 
since then, 66th, 47th, and this year they come in 20th, so he's made a difference. They give him one on the play, bring up a second down and nine from the 21-yard line. Viola and Goings in the backfield, and they'll give it to Goings again, and he's not going anywhere. Stop the bout right at the 20-yard line. Steve, coming into the game, Kevin Barlow is their main go-to guy with over 500 yards, but he is really banged up last week. He has an ankle, so he's not going to be able to go tonight. Goings is somebody who has been struggling with a pinky injury, so they're going to have a hard time getting things going in the running game against a team who, Steve, coming into this game, it's amazing. They've given up barely 190 yards total defense. That's total defense per game. Certainly less than 100 rushing. Brings up a third and 10 off the failed running play. Pittsburgh so far in their five offensive plays. They have two yards to show for it. They look for a little more here under heavy pressure. Priestley showing good athleticism to run away from it. And it was way out of bounds. And it was really cleaned up in a big way. Maybe that's what the flag is for. I'm not sure if there was contact there, but he nearly hit him. Yes, I think they're throwing the I think they're throwing the flag on his intent. Intent to injure. <laughs> I mean, serious battery was coming up. See, one of, my one of my favorite lines about great defenders is they say that they arrive in a bad mood. Certainly that's what happens with the Hokies. They have defenders. Bud Foster's group arrives in a bad mood. So we'll hear the call from Jack Kramer. Well, Corey Moore is the one that flushes him out of the pocket, and then right at the end it appears that Nathaniel Williams, number 92, probably should have just eased up. Because right there, you see, there's no, there, there, there's no collision there. There's no collision there. It looked like he went down, and it appeared that from the secondary, the safety came and took a whack at him, but that's, I don't know, a little ticky-tack, but certainly, as you pointed out, the intent was there. <laughs> yeah, good thing it did not collide. Have an injured quarterback on a play like that. First and ten. See what they do off the penalty. Quick little pass out into the flat. And they connect to Antonio Bryant, the freshman. We check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Steve Stanford trying to remain unbeaten in the Pac 10 at Washington. Fourth quarter late. Some call him the Space Cowboys. Some call him the Gangster of Love. And some just call him Maurice Shaw. Goes 48 yards and Washington hands the Cardinal its first Pac 10 loss. All right, Reese, we're hip to that music reference. Happening guy. He's rhythmic. Second and three now. At the, just about the 40-yard line. Virginia Tech off the blocked punt. Able to get a Michael Vick run off the option play. Kept it and went for 46 yards. Out of the eye. And off the draw play to Goings. The running game is not working effectively so far for Pittsburgh. Not only not effectively, going is having a hard time getting back to the line of scrimmage. Virginia Tech is known for its speed, and one of the things that Bud Foss, the defensive coordinator for Virginia Tech, told me was, he said, hey, I asked him if it was a problem being on Astroton for the first time. He says, what are you talking about? We've got all this speed. He said, that's going to, that's going to, that's going to exacerbate the problems for the Pittsburgh offense. Pittsburgh has rushed five times for a minus one yard. Go pass here. Quick hitter, and they rule it a complete pass to Antonio Bryant from David Priestley. And this is very close to the first down. Steve, it appears you can see Bryant's a little bit upset because he wanted the thing downfield. He had to hustle back. The result of the dive cost him the first, the first down. It was at the 44-yard line. He had the first down, but he had to dive back and go get it. And as a result, they're going to have to punt. And if Virginia Tech does not block another kick in this game, they've certainly got Pittsburgh thinking about it the rest of the way. Greg DeBolt will try to get this one off untouched. Ricky Hall will be the deep man for Tech. And Steve, it's a domino effect because then when you focus too much on protecting the punter, you don't get downfield quite as quick. That affords the Tech people to get back there quickly, set up their blocks, hence the reason why Ricky Hall's averaging 16.5 yards per return. Hunt is a beauty, a spiral. Couldn't have been thrown any better. And it takes a perfect bounce at the five-yard line. A dandy punt that time by Greg the Bolt. We'll come back to Pittsburgh. Let's see some D, D, D. D, D, 
Log on to dsports.com, the ultimate online sporting goods store. dsports.com, seize the D. I believe in taking the time to be right, the time because, to be right. It's because it's a lot faster, than, faster being than being wrong. I believe in taking my clients seriously, my client seriously. And, myself less and myself less so. I believe integrity doesn't hinder performance. It is performance. It is performance. I believe we are driven to succeed because we are unwilling to fail. I work for J.P. Morgan. I work for J.P. Morgan. said that moderation is the key to happiness. We don't know who said it, but we know it wasn't someone from Australia. Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. Outback Steakhouse. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. The Buckeyes look to salvage their season as they head up to East Lansing and seek revenge from a year ago. Ohio State, Michigan State at noon, next Saturday on ESPN. Back in Pittsburgh, PA. Tech with a 7-0 lead, but they find themselves in rather poor field position after the 52-yard punt. They'll start at the 5, and they'll come out in a two-tight end formation. One wide receiver is split out to the right. And here's Michael Vick, and he will give it to Andre Kendrick, the running back. That's surprising, because I would have thought that Shiro and Stiff would be the guy at this point, but evidently they have enough, enough confidence in Kendrick to get him in. Stiff is the man who's been averaging 120 yards per game. But Kendrick has been a more than adequate substitute. Kendrick can throw the ball as well. Earlier this season, had a 35-yard touchdown pass to Andre Davis. Gain of four, second and six. And they'll pitch it to Kendrick, this time trying the right side. Finds a seat and breaks it! Had one man to beat and might have busted the whole way. Instead, he is tripped up at the 22 by Mark Ponko. Steve is poor tackling on the part of the secondary for Pittsburgh. At the point of attack, he's going to get out. Now watch it. Watch as they come up to support. Take a look. Take a look at Ramon Walker. First of all, he overplays. He's off to the side. Now he comes in. There's a miss. There's a miss. The arm tackles just aren't going to cut it. Both Ramon Walker and Amir Purifoy cannot get him down. The result is a big gain and no longer the bad field position for the Hokies. Kendrick got 16 yards on the play, Todd. His personal best was a 24-yard and a touchdown run against Clemson. Gives him the first down. First and 10 now from the 25. Thought about keeping it instead. Does pitch it. Kendrick's looking to break it again down the sideline. Steve. Ramon Walker finally forced him out. Steve, now what do you do? You say you don't want you want to force him to pitch. He pitches because you have two guys on the quarterback, and the result is a lot of astroturf. Cullen Hawkins, the fullback, got a good block for the tailback Kendrick. The thing is with Vic is that people now are so concerned. Before, when you have a guy that can run, he's not supposed to be able to be in the pocket and be able to throw two. And so the idea that you can beat them by forcing him to stay in the pocket is non-existent anymore. Amazing poise for a redshirt freshman. Kendrick has three carries so far, and he's got 35 yards. There you see, it's about half, a little shy of half, the Virginia Tech total to this point. Off the handoff. They try stiff that time back in the football game, and Kendrick was working better. Good job by Pittsburgh at the point of attack. Penetrating. Because Julian Graham is the one who's in on the stop. Pitt just doesn't need to panic here. They need to get a stop and get the ball back and get their passing game going, Steve. Pitt I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just about to say, this is the sort of tempo that Virginia Tech wants, though. This is exactly playing into their hands. And that was such a big part of the discussion from both head coaches. Tempo, Pitt just wanting to stay with them, and Virginia Tech wanted to make sure they stay at their normal tempo and not come down to that of the Panthers. On a second down and ten, Vic to throw. Look deep momentarily as all sorts of time, and now he throws deep. He's got a man, and went up high for the grab was Andre Davis. But Poteet was there on the cover. That is something to watch 
tonight. Andre Davis being covered by Hank Poteet. Both potential All-Americans. Look at the gap that he gives him, and Davis just is trying to go deep. The 10-3 sprinter actually goes by Poteet. He's got plenty of time, but he, he reloads and tries to throw it. Davis goes up, and really, that was kind of a catchable ball. Poteet with him step for step. Davis using his body can't quite come up with it. Poteet key in that defensive backfield, also a key returner for them. Brings up a third and ten. Tech goes to four wide receivers as they spread the field. Lone setback is stiff. Here's Vic from the shotgun now. Again, plenty of time to make his throw. It's complete. Shy of the first down, he hits Ricky Hall, but I think he's short. And Steve, just as I was criticizing the open field tackling of Pittsburgh, let's give Ramon Walker his due. Ricky Hall is 6'3 and 215. That's a big guy in the open field, a 455 guy. Walker able to drop him just short of the first down. Now, Vic is standing there staring at the sideline, wanting to know what the deal is. What do you think? Come on, let's give it a shot, but no. Frank Beamer thinks it's too early in the game, and he's right. With the defense that they have, why would they want to take a chance? Pin them back early in the game. But the new attempt has been successful on their last four fourth down conversion attempts. Tim Stein calls for the fair catch, and Pittsburgh will take over. And when they do so, they find themselves in that 7 0 hole. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. you got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own, and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results, and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. The best athletes. The most popular game. The toughest test. The MLS playoffs. The conference finals begin tomorrow at 5.30 on ESPN2. In the early games, there is only potential, expectation, and possibility. All we have are questions right now, for the answers will come on the ice. Sabres stars at 7.30, Flyers Mighty Ducks at 10.30, Wednesday on ESPN2. Along with Todd Christensen and Holly Rowe, Steve Levy from far from sold out Pittsburgh Stadium here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They have always had problems drawing here at this stadium, even when they had some of their championship teams. And that's why they look forward to moving to a new downtown stadium, which we'll get into as the evening progresses. This is the final season. 75th season of Pitt Stadium. On first and ten, the Panthers nearly picked off. David Priestley put it right in the hands of Michael Hawks. Holly. Guys, you talk about a blue-collar work ethic. Well, the defense of Virginia Tech has a symbol for that. This is their lunch pail. They have it on the sideline for every game. The defense has their defensive goals in here. One of them is to be the number one defense in the country. They also have turf in here. Every game they've played, they've taken a bit of turf. I don't know how they'll do it, though, with this Astro turf today, but I'm going to hurry and get this back before Corey Moore notices <laughs> I've taken it, okay? And Holly, if you could check for a sandwich inside there, that'd be good as well. Todd's getting hungry up here. Throwing. And it's complete. Priestley on a good toss there. Put some air under that one to Latif Grimm. Latif Grimm is their main man. 45 catches for 613 yards and three touchdowns. I'm sure he's going to be an all-Big East receiver. Ran the out route on Midget. That's another one to watch. That's a good matchup. Midget versus Grimm. Truthfully, Grimm and Bryant are going to have to be key in this game because they're just not going to run for 100 yards against this defense. These guys are going to have to come up big. And Priestley may not be able to to uh, duplicate his 375 yards from last week, but he's going to have to be close if they're to win this game. Walt Harris wasn't knocking either of his quarterbacks, but said, hey, with the receiving talent we have, we should be able to complete some passes. And they look to pass again here under some heavy pressure, and the wide receiver fell down. Looked like he was looking for Grimm, but he went down to the turf, and Priestley threw it by him. Had the, coverage that, had the coverage that they wanted, too. You can see him patting himself and saying, my bad. We had exactly what we wanted. 
Here's Midget looking the backfield. He's got the outside move. Cuts to the outside. He's got it. But inevitably, Steve, when you try and cut in the same direction with the same foot, you can't go left off the left foot because that's what's going to happen. You're going to slip, even on AstroTurf. Pittsburgh so far, they've rushed the football four times. They've thrown the football eight times. This is a second and ten from the 28 now. And they give it to Goings, try to cut around the right side, and nothing doing. And let me tell you something about Corey Moore. This was a statue of liberty. He got in the backfield so quickly that he was not fooled. Watch number 56 in his pursuit. Comes up, takes the angle, sees it from behind, and is able to drop Goings. Six foot, 225 pounds, 438 in the 40. His defensive coordinator, Bud, F Bud Foster, said to us, he is a disruptor. And I felt like saying, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Special player. 15 of his 29 tackles so far this season have resulted in losses for Corey Moore. On a third and 11 now. Single setback. Looking to throw. Pass is away and it is complete and good for the first down. It's Antonio Bryant and it looks like David Priestley is starting to get in his rhythm. Ike Charlton made the stop after the pickup of 19. It's a dangerous rhythm, however, Steve, because it's the kind of rhythm that he's going to end up on his back. Take a look at his poise as he hangs in there. Here comes Corey Moore now up the middle. Just releases it. Oh, man. Drop on his back. Nice route. Now the ball is thrown. That's just a great job by Priestley. Brian comes up with a catch, but that's a tremendous job by Priestley, who's able to get rid of the ball, despite the fact that Carl Bradley drops his 300 pounds on him. On the first down. From the 46. Two setbacks to pass again. Pittsburgh into their passing mode. Under heavy pressure throws, and the receiver coming back to the football, but not before the football hit the turf. I think Priestley was, son was stunned by the fact that he had all of that time until Cyrus is able to get on top of him. He had a good four seconds, and he's not used to that. He finally rolled out. And see, that tells you something about the speed of the defensive lineman for Virginia Tech. How many times have you seen a quarterback roll out and buy time, buy time, buy time? They just don't have time. Even at 200, 238 pounds, Cyrus, a little bit quicker, is able to get on top of the quarterback before he can deliver it on the money. Priestley so far, 5 of 9 for 42 yards under the intense pressure of Cyrus in that hokey defense. To pass again. Pass should have been picked off again. Priestley fortunate now two times and not be intercepted that time he almost put it in the hands of Corey Bird Pearson Prelo was the all-american strong safety last year for Virginia Tech now in the NFL they were concerned about that position but Corey Moore a unique athlete five foot ten 216 pounds kind of a Barry Sanders physique but when I asked Bud Foster about that he said that Corey Bird at this point might be playing even a little better than Pearson Prelo which trust me is high praise for what Prelo did last year for the Hokies Corey Bird the former veteran L.A. Parker at a couple of casinos in Atlantic City. they gamble from time to time around the quarterback decision on a third and ten now. Priestley under pressure throws it up for grabs and his receiver Antonio Bryant paid for the errant throw. Nick Sorensen, the former quarterback, now free safety, is the one that comes up and delivers the blow. The throw is just a little bit too high. Once again, Corey Moore providing the pressure. And so DeBolt is on for the punt. He dropped Virginia Tech at the five last time. And Ricky Hall is deep hoping to return this one. Another sky high punt into this Pittsburgh night. And off the fair catch, Tech will start, well, five yards better from their own 10 after the DeBolt punt of 43. Sunday night football for you on Halloween night. Tomorrow night, 8.15 Eastern, Warren Sapp of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will head to Motown to take on the Lions. Then at 9 p.m. Eastern, Monday night, Mike Holmgren returns to Lambeau as the Seahawks take on Brett Favre and the Packers. Sunday night, Monday night football on ESPN and ABC. Steve Ron Wolf was quoted as saying it's just another game, no oh. more, no less. Yeah, give me a break. <laughs> you see Holmgren pleaded to the NFL schedule to make it please don't make me go to Green Bay not at night not in potentially cold weather and he's 0 for 3 in his first season head coach of the Seahawks. Vic buys himself some time throwing on the run and it is complete to his tight end Bob Slokowski and that's a big catch for Slokowski the native of Pittsburgh Pennsylvania returning to Pitt Stadium for the pickup of 14 yards. Michael Vick displays there, Steve, the quick release that everybody is talking about. He's moving to his right, and of course he's a left-hander. Watch the release of Vick. It's the play action. He's going to go the other direction. Now watch you see Swolkowski. Watch this flick. Flick. 
Zip. You know what that reminds me a little bit with the arm motion, a little bit of Randall Cunningham, the way he delivers the ball and it gets there with great velocity. Everybody raves about Vic's release and how quickly he gets rid of it. Out of the eye now. Off the first and ten from the 26. Quick pass. The screen to Andre Davis. They want to get the ball into his hands anytime they can. And he has it out about the 40-yard line. And a little help from his friends. Out front, he got a tremendous block. I believe it was Anthony Lambeau. Take a look. Here comes the screen. Here's the catch. Now as he cuts up field, watch Anthony Lambeau just go, hey, thanks for coming, but uh, you're on your back. <laughs> I think that falls into the heading of Pancake, and Lambeau continues to run out field. <laughs> that would have been funny if you would have beat Andre Davis the end zone, but that wasn't going to happen. 13, again out front. 13 yards on that play. Gives him another first and 10. From the 40. Nick will pitch it this time to Shiron Smith. He's across midfield and more. And Pittsburgh fortunate to get the angle to push him out at the 25-yard line. Demetrius Rich was with him step for step after the 34-yard gain by Stitt. And Steve, Andre Davis, the wide receiver who just got help from his friends, now he returns the favor. Watch downfield number 88 make the block on the corner that enables him to get some extra yardage. There's the pitch. Good block at the point of the attack. Look at the gap. Now to the right of your screen, you're going to see a great job of the wide receiver taking care of business. Ferguson with a great block, and Stiff, the beneficiary, with 34 yards. Drive. This is a drive that started from the Virginia Tech 10-yard line, but now the Pittsburgh 26. And they hand it off to the fullback to change up to Jarrett Ferguson into the middle of the line as the clock rolls towards two and a half minutes to play in this first quarter. Got to give Jarrett Ferguson his due. There was a man who also had a great lead block on that last play. A lot of compliments from the Pittsburgh coaches, which is surprising, and I say that not because he's not a good player, but he's a very undersized fullback. He's 5'9", 216, and this day and age of contemporary fullbacks, you usually get the 240, 250 variety, but Ferguson brings a lot to the table despite the fact that he's a little bit undersized. Ferguson made his first collegiate start right here at Pitt Stadium a couple of years ago. Out of the shotgun, flag flies before Vic can throw it. And uh, would appear to be a motion penalty. Steve, our friend Anthony Lambeau, who just destroyed Ramon Walker, is the guy who flinches just a little bit. And as a result, Virginia Tech will move five yards back. Before the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Steve, up to this point, Virginia Tech, as you pointed out, two minutes remaining in the first stanza, has already rushed for 116 yards. The Pittsburgh rush defense had been so good, considering the competition they were playing. They held Rutgers to less than one yard per rush. They held Penn State to just 52, or rather to 65 yards earlier in the season in that three-point ball game. They've been excellent against the run, but they're not so far here tonight. Here's Vic, pressure right up the middle. Vic to throw on the run, and it is short hop for the incomplete pass. He was looking to Davis. Kareem Thompson once again is able to put the pressure on Vic. Hank Poteet in coverage doing a nice job. Take a look at number 22. He's, he's a little bit smaller version of Corey Moore at 6 feet, 200 pounds. But he cuts in, can't quite make the play, but he forces Vic to throw on the run coming off the wrong foot. And he can't get the juice on the ball he wants. Thompson, the defensive captain for every game this season. And in the Pittsburgh system, that is significant. Now you see the numbers that he has piled up this year. On a third and 13 upcoming. Demetrius Rich is the injured player for Pittsburgh. You know, we mentioned Kareem Thompson as being kind of a junior Corey Moore. This is kind of a new thing with defenses now. As a result of Corey Moore's success, people are more willing to play some linebackers that are around 200 or 205. And what a tremendous story he is as the defensive captain for Pittsburgh. Rob Butler replaces Rich at the corner. We'll see if they go to his side. They'll be wearing 20 in the blue. On a third and 13. Here's Vic. Again, the pressure comes from the middle. And Vic is flushed out. He throws as he's hit. He puts it up the ground, and it is incomplete. That could have been caught, and it could have been caught by the other team. And Vic, very lucky to have that just go as an incomplete pass. It's a great effort by Bryant Stiff to go down there. He gets whacked. 
Slowakowski was also in the vicinity. Vick is able to get rid of the ball. It's up in the air for grabs. Take a look at Stiff. Can't quite come up with it. And boy, does he pay the price. Man, did he get whacked. A fourth and 13. Seth Hornick was the man that delivered the blow on Stiff. And now the pressure on Shane Graham here with about a 46-yarder, Steve. His long is 48 for Graham. This one is up, and it is good. Shane Graham puts Tech up by 10 on the 46-yard field goal. Now we check in with Reese. Steve, Nebraska and Kansas Huskers trying to get over that disappointing loss to Texas against Kansas, and then Hayden punt is blocked by Matt Jordan and Kansas on the board against Nebraska for the first time in three years. Huskers have won 30 straight in the series. All right, Reese, thanks very much. Block kicks are in tonight around the nation in college football. We have one in that game. We've had one here. One of the things that has to happen for Pittsburgh, Steve, is they need to take advantage of the better field position. Tech has started all their drives at an average at their own 16. The only drive that they had start in good field position was after the block punt, but still they've been able to move down the field, pad some yardage, and keep that Pittsburgh offense off the field. Kibble will look to pin them back again. He handles the kickoffs and the kicking duties for the point after and field goals. Hank Poteet is deep. The big kick return man for Pittsburgh. With a minute 33 to play in quarter number one, the Tech has opened up a 10-0 lead. End over end kick received by Poteet from the three. And it's to break it down the sideline. Gets the crowd in the game. Took a heavy hit as he was forced out at the 27-yard line. Ike Charlton got to him. Well, the last time these two got together, Virginia Tech and Pitt, last year, September 26th, Chiron Stith scored from 16 yards away. Tech had a 14-0 lead. That was after their first two possessions of the game. Corey Moore came up with a block on a 26-yard field goal attempt in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, Keon Carpenter would intercept Matt Lytle and return it 10 yards for the score. One of Carpenter's three picks of the day. Virginia Tech won despite only 202 yards of offense and 11 first downs, and yet they won and won easily thanks to the picks, 27 to 7. Corey Moore in on the tackle. I was thinking to myself, Steve, as I watched those replays, 20 years from now when Corey Moore is done he's going to have kind of a legend people are going to have stories about him you know his 12 sacks will turn into 20 you know his 4 3 is going to be like 4 1 he blocked 20 kicks it's just amazing that he is always around the ball making things happen I mean he is just an absolute problem for everybody the highest praise that you can have is when an offensive quarter has to alter what they do for one guy and that's what happened every week when we've done Virginia Tech Pittsburgh looking to throw on second down like they complete the pass on a heavy hit. Latif Grimm on the reception there with 39 seconds left in the quarter. And Steve, one of the things that Walt Harris, the head coach and offensive coordinator, I might add, for Pittsburgh pointed out is that we, a quarterback, we've got some guys that can come up and catch the ball now. That's another great catch that we've seen Grimm make. If they can get the ball down the field, we can protect because we can move the ball because we have two guys that can go and get it in Bryant and Grimm. First and 10 from the 39. Out of the eye. Priestley calling signal. Off the play action, looks to throw. There's all sorts of time, and throwing deep across the middle, and it is complete. Priestley able to connect to Latif Grimm, and they're inside the 30-yard line before Roniel Whitaker put him down. Right at the end of the play, take a look at Charlton, the cornerback on the opposite side. It appears that when he comes off his man, he might actually have a chance. Take a look here. The play is going to be in the middle, and for whatever reason why they'd watch play action, I don't know, because they haven't been able to run the ball. Watch Charlton come off his man, and it looks like he can make the play. See, look at that. It looks like he's got a chance to make the play, but he waits, and at the last minute in waiting, they're able to come up with a big play. Steve, up to that point, up to that point, they've been averaging less than three yards per play. Now two big plays has them back in the game. The 33-yarder, they have some momentum now. And that'll do it. The quarter comes to an end. And it does so with Pittsburgh having some momentum. And they'll start with a first down 
at the Virginia Tech 28 yard line where they'll also start in a bit of a hole. Tech has a 10 nothing lead. Michael Vick impressive in the first half throwing the football and running it. He broke this one for 46 and six points. To really get amongst the Australian wilderness, you can take a four-wheel drive safari or a four-legged one.